Is Donald Trump a fascist? It's a term that gets thrown around a lot these days, but what does it really mean? Today, we're breaking down 10 ways in which Trump's actions and policies display fascist tendencies. Stick around and let's dive into it. Let's start with nationalism. Trump's whole platform revolves around the idea of America first. Now, strong national pride isn't inherently bad, but when it's used to promote division or an U.S. versus them mentality, it starts crossing a line. Fascist leaders historically have used nationalism to rally people around the idea that their country is inherently superior and outsiders are a threat. Does this mean Trump is a fascist just because he promotes nationalism? No, but it's one piece of a larger puzzle. Now let's talk about authoritarianism. Trump has frequently attacked institutions that challenge him, whether it's the courts, the FBI, or the media. He's undermined the independence of these bodies, which are essential in any democracy to keep power in check. This is a common tactic in authoritarian regimes where leaders attempt to weaken or control institutions that stand in their way. Next up, the cult of personality. Fascist regimes often center around a leader who is portrayed as larger than life, someone the people must remain loyal to above all else. Trump's supporters often express loyalty to him personally rather than to the broader political system. From MAGA hats to I alone can fix it statements, Trump's personal brand is his greatest political asset. Disdain for democratic norms is another trait we've seen. Trump's refusal to accept the results of the 2020 election is a perfect example. Whether you believe in election fraud claims or not, the way Trump undermined trust in the process is deeply problematic for a functioning democracy. When leaders sow doubt about elections without evidence, it weakens democracy and sets the stage for authoritarian control. Law and order sounds good on paper, right? But when Trump used this rhetoric during the Black Lives Matter protests, it often meant militarized crackdowns on civilians exercising their right to protest. This militarization is a hallmark of fascist regimes, where force is used to maintain control, not just to keep the peace. One of the core elements of fascist ideology is xenophobia, fear of outsiders. Trump's anti-immigrant policies, like the Muslim travel ban and family separations at the border, tap into this fear. Immigrants, especially those from non-European countries, were painted as criminals and threats to the American way of life. That's classic scapegoating, which brings us to our next point. Fascist regimes often scapegoat minorities to unite the majority. In Trump's case, we saw this with his comments about Mexicans being rapists or his administration's frequent targeting of immigrants as the root cause of America's problems. It's a dangerous tactic used to stir fear and create division. Next, we've got Trump's attacks on the press. Fascist regimes know that controlling the narrative is key to controlling the people. Trump's constant labeling of the media as fake news or the enemy of the people echoes how authoritarian leaders attempt to discredit and silence dissenting voices. Trump has, on multiple occasions, encouraged political violence. At his rallies, we saw him tell supporters to rough up protesters. Then, of course, there's January 6th. While Trump may not have explicitly called for violence that day, his rhetoric and refusal to accept the election results certainly played a role in what happened. Finally, we come to Trump's disregard for the rule of law. Whether it was pressuring the Department of Justice to protect his allies or issuing controversial pardons, Trump has often shown a willingness to sidestep legal processes when they don't serve his personal interests. In fascist regimes, the law exists to serve the leader, not the people. So is Trump a fascist? That's up for you to decide. But what's clear is that many of his actions and policies align with behaviors we've seen in authoritarian and fascist leaders throughout history. Whether that's intentional or not, it's something worth thinking about. If you found this video thought-provoking, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do these points make sense? Have I missed anything? And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.